Hi guys, I'm Drive and Convey of Random Say, and today I'll be looking at the first generation Apple Pencil. This is the Apple Pencil, introduced in November 2015 to accompany the first iPad Pro. In the five years since its launch to today, and with all the 2020 product launches over and done with now, it is now compatible with these iPads. In the box you of course get the pencil, an extra writing tip, and a female to female lightning adapter. So for £89 from Apple, what do you actually get for your money? From its tip, all the way along its body, ending at the lightning connector protected by the magnetically attached cap. That gives a satisfying snap noise. The Apple Pencil connects to the iPad by Bluetooth. It provides a low latency or lag of about 20 milliseconds, but if I'm honest with you, the latency is so small that you can hardly see or feel the delay. It's an accurate detection of the angle you're writing at and the amount of pressure you're applying make it much better than the old adage of using your fingers on the screen to write or draw with. And its flexibility makes it the perfect tool for anything from taking quick notes to creative drawing, as well as those precise jobs that require precision and accuracy. And now with the scribble feature introduced in iPad OS 14, you're able to write in any type box and it translates your writing into text. With its ultra low power processor, you're going to get about 12 hours battery usage with the pencil. As you can see with the test, it took about 13 minutes for the pencil to charge from 90% to 100% via the iPad. Now this leads me on to two issues I have with the first generation Apple Pencil. Firstly, the way it charges. If you're charging its lithium ion battery via the female to female lightning adapter that you get in the box, with the lightning to USB lead, then that's fine. But if you're charging it via the iPad, you stick the lightning port end of the pencil into the iPad, leaving you with this non-subtle form factor that seems so unapple like The second thing is about the battery in the pencil itself. The battery actually never turns off, and even if it's disconnected from the iPad, one lift of the pencil and its accelerometer detects movement and automatically reconnects it back to the iPad. Once you charge it, it will be constantly discharging up until the point at which you need to recharge it again. But thankfully, recharging it doesn't take that long. Should you not want to pay the £89 price for the Apple Pencil, then there are compatible styluses and even the Logitech Crayon, which Apple also recommend on their store for a cheaper £59.95. But as I like the aesthetic that comes with having and using the Apple Pencil on the iPad Pro, I'm always going to opt for the Apple one. The transition from Lightning to USB on the newest iPad Pros and the latest iPad Air meant that Apple have also had to adapt their Apple Pencil for the changing market. And in 2018, they introduced their second generation Pencil, which added some new interaction features and thankfully removed my first issue and mostly reduced my second issue to a minimum on the battery by no longer charging via the power connector, but ingeniously by magnetically attaching to the iPad for automatic charging and pairing. While Apple is still releasing iPads with lightning ports, there is still a home in the current Apple family for this first generation pencil. In terms of self-promoting, is there another Apple product that self-promotes itself by whichever position you lay it down, it conveniently rolls to always show the Apple pencil wording on top, a nifty little use of its internal counterbalancing, but I like it. Is it worth £89? Probably not. But Apple wouldn't be Apple without putting a premium on it. And in return, you're going to get a very satisfying writing experience, incorporated in a nicely crafted, sleek, high quality built, typically Apple-like pencil that you'll find hard to replicate with other electronic pencils, styluses or pens. The experience can be further bettered by installing a paper light screen to your iPad, making it feel like you're writing on a physical sheet of A4. But that doesn't take anything away from the enjoyment that you're going to get writing on an iPad with that one. And being left-handed means I'm not going to smudge my writing. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe to the channel, it would be greatly appreciated. And press the bell icon to get notified every time I release a new video. Well, that's all from me today. I will see you on the next one. Bye. If you enjoyed this video, why don't you go and watch one of these two videos here before the time runs out. Three, two, one.